Hi everyone, this is Martin here. This is the second video and I want to recap what happened last week. Uh, just really quickly go over some of the major pairs. That was for the week of May the 9th to the 13th and uh, also perhaps give you some tips and things like that. So let's take a look here with the Euro USD. This is the daily chart and uh, generally um, I mentioned that um, uh, not generally, <laughs> um, I did mention in uh, last week's um, update to wait for bullish evidence and also buy, uh, put a buy stop above the 115.20. Now, uh, there's the bullish evidence after the pullback. However, nothing happened after that. In fact, price retraced right back down. So if you would have placed a trade here at the open of the next candle right there, then uh, that would have been a loss for you. So, um, you know, you can't win them all, okay? <clears throat> The other thing is, uh, I did say buy, uh, take a buy stop above 115, 115.20. That that would not have triggered, so you wouldn't have been in a trade there. However, here is a good opportunity for a counter tr trend trade again, and uh, you can see the histo bars were coming back down lower. And the, uh, you could not have done anything on a daily chart because basically you have to wait till a candle closes. So here. Uh, price was sitting right at the uh, 21 and uh, uh, it did not break below this previous bullish white candle. So I wouldn't have done anything there. Then waiting for the Friday close right here, I you, again, you can't do anything because you have to wait till this candle to close on Friday. So again, no trade. The only way you could have made some pips there would have been to go down to a four hour chart and you can see price is broken right here price is broken the uh, the uh, trend line uh and and you can see with these small one two there's a doji right there uh just right above the 200 sma with these couple of small candles this is still called a uh, retracement or pullback or basically the sellers are resting before they continue uh, their downward trend, um, opening a trade uh, and wa well, watching this candle right here close below the trend line. So on the four hour chart, you would have had to have seen this candle. And if you would have gotten in right there, then that would have been good for approximately 60 pips, okay? But again, you have to, you had to have uh, you had to have seen this black bearish candle right there closing below the 200 getting in at the open right there so that would have given you a trade opportunity and uh, not much of a pullback but there is a bit of a clue there anyways okay so the uh, the next one is the uh, british pound usd this is a lot clearer this is the four hour chart but let's just switch to the uh, daily for a second okay so you can see here uh, price went down and last week I said we're in a bullish sideways market wait for more bullish evidence my bias is to the sell as I believe price will come down lower to the 200 SMA on the H4 chart that's exactly what I said and um, we're um, I said my bias was to the sell side so here uh, waiting for the Sunday Monday here you still would not have taken a well, you would not have taken a trade. You, the idea is to wait for a pullback, and the, and the next Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we had a bit of a pullback. So let's go to the four-hour chart. This is the pullback right there, everyone, okay? And drawing a trend line below that, and uh, watching this candle break below the trend line would have gotten in right about there, and that would have been good to at least the f at least for 42, 44 pips, to the um, 200 SMA, uh, if you would have held on to the trade, you would have made another 10, 10 to 20 pips uh, more than that. So that's the um, that is basically a swing pullback trade on the four-hour chart. You can see how that worked. Okay, and now we get to the Australian uh, USD, which gave us the biggest opportunity last week. Uh, this was good for at least I think 65 pips, but again. On the daily, you can see on the uh, Sunday Monday open price closed below the uh, 100. You could have, if you would have taken a trade right there, um, and he, and here's the here's the thing: if you would have taken a trade right there, thinking that price is going to go down to the 200, 
The next day it retraced back up, retraced back up. Uh, depending on where your stop loss uh, is, if your stop loss was above the, um, the, the 8 right here at least, or above the 21, you still would have been in the trade um, and watched, uh, watched it come back down further. However, um, if you would have also uh, wait, uh, gone to the 4-hour chart, here you can see clearly the 4-hour, the retracement back here, this is the swing pullback, and um, watching this candle right here close below the trend line, getting in right there at the next candle would have given you approximately uh, 70 pips, okay, 68, 70 pips on the Australian USD. If you were playing the four hour or even the, the here's the hour, it, let's say if you were, if you had the opportunity, okay, here's the pullback right here, uh, watching price go below the 50 right there and um, taking a sell trade somewhere along there, okay? Um, so that would have been the, that's the one hour chart. Here's the four hour chart with the pullback, okay? And here's the daily chart. Again, the daily chart would have given you the uh, the big clue. Um, again, the pullback. Again, all, instead of always waiting for a breakout, you always wait for a pullback. See with this white candle here, the next white candle, drawing a trend line below there. This You would have seen this black candle on the Thursday, this black bearish candle, close below the trend line, getting in right there at the open of the next candle would have given you the pips down to at least the 200 where it closed on the Friday, okay? And again, uh, you can see that trend line right there. I've drawn it. This is the daily chart. Again, I'll switch to the four-hour. See, that's the same trend line right there. So either way, uh, on the daily or the four hour, you still would have made pips. But again, you have to watch your candles every single day. You can't let one day go by because the, uh, you, if you do that, you, you will tend to miss some of these really important trades. Okay. And what else did I want to show you? Okay, um, this is the same Australian US daily chart. I want to switch to the LEOD where often it becomes very clear. A lot of you have said to me that um, watching the uh, price action on the LEOD charts does give you a clearer picture. And again, here's the daily chart. Go see, go back to this area. See this, uh, this kind of con uh, consolidation? Price is just right in between the the upper and lower lower yellow line well what you what you have to do is start drawing some trend lines and here is one long trend line right there okay you can see price breaks below the trend line however another a shorter term trend line let's say the pre, uh, previous swing low to right there now why did I draw this trend line at um, joining this swing low to this swing low well here is a valley price comes down up up down right so this is a valley take a look your 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 first your 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 first biggest swing uh, low to the left here is a valley and you could even have done this I'm going to do something else for you there you go <clears throat> okay so you can do this there you go there is a more um uh, uh a shorter term trend line more immediate you know only going back the last uh, uh well going back to to march right here so again joining the bottoms here you can see here's a valley here's a valley here's a valley drawing that having that in place watching price come down here especially with this candle, would have gotten you in right there. And again, getting in right there, let me just get the, my crosshair right there, would have given you at least 171, uh, down to the 200 SMA, at least 220 pips. Okay, so that was your entry right there. However, this, this past week, we're talking about uh, this previous week, one, two, three, four, five, five days. Let me just draw in your, uh, okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So now we've got the Sunday, Monday here. We've got the retracement on the Tuesday retracement there drawing in. Okay. Right there. That would be your, 
that would be your trend line. Seeing this big uh, uh, candle break kind of below the, the trend line, you still would have gotten in right there and made some pretty good pips. Go down to a four hour chart, there's that same trend line, okay? You can see that same trend line, so you would have gotten in there and you would have made all these pips. Again, the uh, blue line is below the yellow and the histo bars are below the zero. So again, the LEOD charts are great if you're uh, playing short term, uh, uh, sh uh, you know, on a shorter term time frame as well, as well as the daily. They will often give you much more clarity than the other price action charts. Okay, and finally, I've got one more to look at. We're going to look at the, uh, this is a terrific pair for a number of reasons. Uh, this is the daily chart of the U.S. CAD, and again, you can see on the daily chart, looking, you know, you know again, minimizing here, price finally broke ab uh, above this trend line right here, okay? So we're in a buy zone. However, we're in a buy zone, even though we're still below the uh, 50 moving average. So long-term, on the long-term charts, uh, we're really still in, we're still in a downtrend, major downtrend, okay? And, uh, you know, you, uh, switching to the daily chart, maximizing it, like zooming in, you can see we break the trend line. So we're kind of going up slowly. We're still in the major downtrend, okay? I mean, take a look at the price action from the left here all the way down here. So still in, in a major downtrend until we break this 50 SMA, okay? But let's look at the entry for this week, okay? So let me go down to uh, the four-hour chart. Okay, let's do that. And let's draw in a trend line. This is the four-hour chart. Okay, can you see where I'm going with this? Price has price comes back in a major pullback down to the down to the 50 moving average. Bounces up, bounces up. We want to take a look, see if price can get above the 21. There's the 21. The red line is the 200. That's the mother of all moving averages. So we want to see if price can uh, can pull and bounce above the 200, above the 21. It does with this candle right there, and that gives you the um, pretty good opportunity to get in right there. So good for at least 43 pips, uh, depending on, you know, and and that was till the uh, close on Friday, so about 44, 45 pips. So uh, not terrific, but better than nothing. And if you would have closed your trade, then that would have been great as well. So uh, the other thing I want to show you is a another way of um, gauging a, a pullback and how far will price pull back. So when we're in an uptrend like this, you can see we're going higher, 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 higher. We can use the Fibonacci tool, which is a great tool to use if you want to see how far down price will come before possibly swinging back up again, okay? So we're going to show you that in, uh, I'm going to go to my top left-hand corner. Hold on. Okay, do you see in the top left above my chart? Here's the chart. Here's the Fibonacci tool, okay? So that's what I'm going to click, and you're going to see what I do with that in just a second. Okay, I've switched to the four-hour chart, and what I'm going to do, I've got my um, Fibonacci tool. You can see that with the cursor right here. Okay, and so what we want to do is we want to start drawing from the bottom here. This is the 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 most um, or the 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 biggest swing low, which is to the left side of uh, of, of price here. Okay, so here's the swing low. And we want to make sure that there's at least two candles to the right, two candles to the left that are higher than the uh, uh, than the wick of the middle bar right here. Okay, so you can see this one, this one, and this one, this one. They're both higher than the middle wick of this uh, candle right there. So uh, we want to, right there, drag the Fibonacci tool to the swing high. So we're at this sw swing low, swing high, okay and right there let your mouse go 
And you can see it draws these lines with these numbers on the side. These are the retracement values. So you can see price has gone up from 0 to 100 if we're talking about in a percentage basis. So, uh, and then we're looking, back, looking for a retracement. And generally, we want to see price retrace back to the 38, 50, or 61.8 Fibonacci levels, okay? So in this case, once price was here, it came back down to at least, you see right here, it came back down to at least, uh, I'm sorry, down, right here, came back down to at least 23.60, right there and then price came down to here which is the 38.2 level it, it tried to go a little lower but then bounced right up and once it bounces off this uh, key level 38.2 we know then um, uh, price is going to go higher okay and in another lesson I'm going to tell you the importance of knowing uh, about a little bit about the Fibonacci because now we can also um, kind of predict where price is going to go in the future based on on how uh, far down price is retraced from the swing high okay so but right now I want to keep things real simple um, if price would have come back down to the 200 uh, to the 100 SMA and down to the 50 level uh, it could have done that as well and then bounced up higher but basically we want to see price come down to one of these levels, it doesn't have to come down to 38, but generally if it comes down to the 38, to the 50, or 61%, 61.8 retracements and bounces higher, that's what ideally what we're looking for, okay? And you can see the histobar is above the zero right there below your chart. Bounce, as I, me uh, as I mentioned, prices bounced up higher. We would have gotten in. Uh, and But that's how you use the Fibonacci. So again, if you're looking to see how far price is going to retrace down in percentage, then you, uh, you've got to um, uh, start with the uh, low right here, the, the, the swing low, attach your Fibonacci from here all the way to the swing high, let your mouse go, and that'll draw in those lines. And then you can just watch price, see how far it goes to at least one of these levels. Sometimes price goes all the way down to the 61.8. Sometimes price may go all the way down to 78.6 and then swing higher again, okay? So a lot of traders like using FIB levels and in the in the coming weeks, we'll, we'll uh, give you more lessons about the FIBs and how to do that, okay? Right now, we're using, I, I'm showing you the FIB levels as areas of support. And this is the, this is the important thing. Using the FIB levels, in this case, the 38.2 as an area of support, and you can see it all lined up with the 50 uh, uh, with the 50 SMA, the the blue line here, and then bounced higher as well. Uh, so that's that's uh, the reason for that, and um, that's about it. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to. Um, uh, let me know in an e email. In, in, like I said, in future lessons, we will go over the Fibonacci and a lot of other different things as well. Uh, I just want to keep this video short for now. But uh, in the meantime, take care. Happy trading. We will talk to you again soon. Bye for now.